We're here to talk about Dell's 13th generation servers. Now, before I begin, uh, and I took tell Corey a quick uh, story here. So I'm on my way to work today, and I'm thinking about our little uh, uh, our little presentation here today, checking our little server chat that we're doing, and I got the 90 station blaring on my, on my Sirius radio, and I, I get Rex and FX rump shaker going. So now in my head I have like an R730 twerking. I just can't get rid of that image, so I apologize if, it, if, I, if there's any, like, uh, any surprises to this, but that's what's in my head right now. If anybody out there can actually Yes, me. please send it in. It. Please send it. Yes, that would be amazing. Uh, so uh, the 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 13th generation. For those who don't know, that's any server with the third character as a, as a three. So your M630s, your R530s, R730XTs, um, T630s, any of those with the with the last character of, or the third character as a three. So. So Corey, uh, we've been talking for years about how the 12th generation servers, they've really kind of set the bar for virtualization, for, uh, for density. How do the 13th generation servers stand up to that? Um, they, they continue those, those leaps in technologies. Um, the, the 13th gen right now is kind of an iterative jump, but not because of the box itself. The box has, um, it's a lot of future proofing in it. So as the technologies that are in the um, 13th gen, like the DDR4, uh, the 12 gig per second process, as those things progress, that's when we're gonna really see this, uh, the 13th gen move away from the 12th gen as far as density and performance. Okay, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Looking at the 13th generation servers, one of the first ones I saw was the R730 XD. And I, I, I saw it where it was a combination of the 1.8 inch drives and the three and a half inch drives. And, and the only thing I thought in my head is like, this is like the new hyper-converged box. It's an ecologic killer. Because uh, when you can throw some sort of software in there like Starwind and get tiering of them like that um, all in one box. So it's, it's really impressive and impressive to look at and, and all. Um, so Corey, as far as the density goes, you said the, uh, that you were really impressed with the 13th generation. What servers were you impressed with so far? Um, the R730. XV, like you said, the one that, that combines uh, eight by three and a half inch, so you put those uh, 12 gigs per second, six terabyte drives when, when they come out, you can fill that up with that, and then fill it up with 1.8 inch. Um, it also has uh, 18 by 1.8 inch SSD slots. So with, can you imagine having eight six terabyte 12 gig per second drives plus 18 uh, SSDs running at 12 gig per second? That's like that's ridiculous. It really is. Yeah. Now, the 630, you were telling me yes, just yesterday how impressed you were with that one. Yeah, the 630 is amazing. In a, in a 1U server chassis, they crammed in 24 of the 1.8 uh, drive, inch drive base. So you could have 24 SSDs all just in a 1U. In a 1U. That's, yeah, yeah, ridiculous. It's crazy eye on <laughs> I Now I got the 630 twerking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, so, we, so we got the drives. Uh, and, the, and these are all running 12 gig per second? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, the 12 gig per second drives, currently right now, as far as Dell's concerned, is, is strictly to the SSDs. Um, Seagate does have a six terabyte SOS uh, 12 gig per second drive, enterprise grade drive on the market. So I'm sure Dell is working on the firmware so that we can get those in Dell brand and flavors to throw into our Dell box. Very nice, so the rate cars now support 12 gig per second. Uh, we're, uh, something else I uh, heard about is that they now support two terabyte or two gigs of cache. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, um, basically on the uh, perk nine, as they're calling it, is they double the amount of cache. So on a, a lower end card with the previous generation, say you got 512 megs of cache. Now you're going to get one gigabyte of non volatile cache. And then on your high end cards like the H730P, you're going to actually get two gigabytes of non volatile cache. I mean, two gigs of cache plus 12 gig per second drives is crazy. Yeah, you got a smoking server right there. Absolutely. Any other improvements or changes to the rate bar? Um, what they've basically done with the... Uh, like, like cascading we were talking about earlier. Cascading you said is different. Uh, no longer can you do that at the, at the rate card level. It's now software based. Absolutely. They went away from just basically Dell Cascade and now they're using um, Dash Cash from SanDisk. And the way that works is with your base server, you get a three-year license to do the DOS cache. Um, each additional year is going to cost you extra money. Okay. Um, I don't really know uh, what kind of improvements it are. It seems to me so far that it's basically like cache gain. But again, uh, another benefit of the two gig 
of non-volatile cash on the card and 12 gig drives, using that for your cash gate or cash backup to your hard drives is just going to increase your performance immensely. Yeah, I'll just uh, make sure I tell Todd, our engineer, to go do some benchmarks on that so we get some, some good data for you guys. Uh, so we got we got we got smoke and rain cards, smoke and drives. Uh, now are those all new, um, or are those backwards compatible? Um, tell me about some of that. You, you, they are backwards compatible. So if you have still got some uh, six gig per second drives laying around, or even three gig per second drives that you just you don't want to get rid of, um, you can throw them into the machine. Uh, that's kind of that'd be sort of like putting little skinny bicycle tires on. Ferrari, in my opinion, <laughs> um, you, you have this awesome box and you're going to throw three or six gig drive, per second drives, but you can, can reuse your drives if you need to. Okay, so those drives you can put in the, the older drives. Um, CPUs, can you do the same thing with CPUs? CPUs you can't. Um, when Intel went to their V3 uh, series of processors, um, it is a new socket and chipset design, so you will not be able to, like in the 12 gen, you could use V1s and V2s uh, in the same box. Um, you can't do that. You're going to have to Okay. Um, Are they faster than the V2s? Um, much faster. Uh, in, in my opinion, um, that's one of the larger jumps in performance aside from the drives in this new generation. Uh, across ben benchmarking and depending on what kind of application you put into, the V3 saw anywhere from a 5% to 30% increase. And this is the V3s right now, um, backed by DDR4 and its infancy. So even as DDR4 improves and uh, grows, you're going to see those benchmarks on the V3s increase. Okay, you just mentioned DDR4 memory. Uh, is that another change, or it's kind of a hard to stop? Where the 13th generation can they can only take DDR4 if we're talking about it. Absolutely. Um, DDR4 uses 288 pins versus 280 pins on DDR3. Also, the notching is different, so it physically will not fit into the slot. Okay. Um, but are those faster right now, or are those about the same speed as the DDR3s? It's about the same as the DDR3. Um, the main thing right now is. It's going to be very much faster. The, the starting clock of DDR4 is the highest clock speed that DDR3 can go to. The, the issue right now is the latency. Uh, the latency on DDR4 is a little bit more than the DDR3, but as the geniuses at the memory chip making places tighten things up, they're going to get that latency down. And then that's when, once that latency down is down and the clock speed starts increasing, that's when DDR4 is going to pull away from DDR3 quickly. OK, yeah, we we're, were just looking at a chart the other day that kind of showed how that's typical memory. So when DDR3 came out, it was about the same. Kind of like, it's like they're, you're running a relay race, and it's just kind of it passes the baton. You're in that little conversion step, um, but or transition step, they haven't actually taken that, the last leg yet. So exactly. it's kind of where it's on par right now. OK, so that's DDR4 memory. Um, anything else with this with this server? We kind of talked about drives, we talked about memory, we talked about processors. Um, anything else that's kind of a, a new thing with these 13th generation servers? Um, it, as far as a like, new new thing, um, Dell has actually jumped on the NFC bandwagon. Uh, they like in, the football team? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, near field communication. Every, that's kind of the hot thing. Whether you're bumping phones to trade pictures, or you're using Google Wallet or Apple Pay to uh, pay for items at the grocery store, NFC is like the hot new cool uh, tech term. Um, they actually integrated it into their bezel, so you'll be able to take your Android phone go up to the bezel of the server and hit the quick sync button and sync with that server all the IDRAC information. Uh, so you'll be able to set your DHCP uh, or set a static IP address and sync it to the server so you don't have to. All right, this sounds like a bunch of like marketing fluff. Is, is this is real? Is anyone going to be using this or is it just a gimmick from, from that? I think it's, it's kind of both. Um, it's definitely, in my opinion, marketing and gimmick just because NFC is cool and everybody wants to use it. Um, as it grows, it could blossom into a, a feature that you have to have. There are a couple instances where I think it would be cool. Um, for instance, if you have to rack 10 servers, um, instead of racking all the servers and then either having to hook up a KVM or hook up uh, a monitor to each one of those to set up your iDrive so that you can remotely manage it, you can put them in the rack, use your phone, and quickly run down all of them and set up all your iDrive, and then you don't have to go back to the server room again. You can go manage them. Yes. I can see that. I, I, I can, I'm thinking in my head. I can see like a little like a local service provider coming into someone. Uh, they, they tell me that their their servers fail. They go to go up to it with their phone. Shh, there we go. And they can pull up all the information and remotely manage without even having to get to that person's network. So I, I can see it's a little 
a little more usable. Now, I heard you say Android, and I grabbed my iPhone, and I know we're getting some feedback on this from all these Apple haters, but is it also on Apple, or is it just Android? Well, I was about to say, um, unfortunately, no, you would not be able to do that, because you have Apple. It's uh, Apple locks down their NFC currently, just for Apple uh, Pay, um, so strictly just Android. All right, so I'm going to put you away. It's maybe if we convert, I never know. You never know. So uh, maybe a bit turn from the Android here. Okay, so iDRAC, uh, you mentioned that. So you can remotely manage that with the, your phone, with your Android phone. Any other improvements to the draft? Um, iDRAC 8 is actually pretty awesome. I think it's one of the uh, places that they really listen to the, their customers and um, gave us what I want and really improved it. Um, one of the biggest things out of the gate is even starting at the iDRAC 8 Express level now, you get a dedicated one gig NIC for management. So you no longer have to use one of your quad port NICs, a port on your quad port, or take up one of your network connections just for management. It comes with it on the Express. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, talking to data centers, that's one of the first things they tell us, is that these low-end Dell boxes, they got to upgrade all of the enterprise card, and it makes it cost prohibitive. And really against their competitors, they've been switching more to like a super micro. So this is Dell's attempt to really kind of steal that market. Makes a lot of sense. They're really listening. Yeah, absolutely. If you can, if you need a dedicated NIC, um, but you don't need all the features that have come with the enterprise level, why should you have to waste money on those features? Now you can just get your Express um, with the management features you need and have that NIC. Um, they've also added some cool things across the board to all the levels, uh, Express and enterprise. Um, for instance, on all the levels, uh, back you can back up in virtual configurations. Nice. Uh, it, it's it's great in that. If you save a configuration, um, even to your phone or to wherever with the NFC, um, if that box goes down for some reason, catastrophically, and you need to get a new box, put it in, and then re-upload that configuration so you don't have to go through and reset all those uh, things manually. So that will really save you some time. Um, they've also added system like across the board on all the okay. levels, which wow. is pretty sweet. Um, Enterprise, they added, uh, oh, and also across the board, they added DCM I 1.5, okay. which is pretty cool. Okay, what, what does that give you? I have no idea, but I'm sure it's awesome. <laughs> it is Dell. <dumb>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the Enterprise adds automatic firmware updates, and it also adds performance monitoring. Uh, performance monitoring is pretty cool, so you can see, like, hey, DDR4 and my V3 box, look at my performance. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Automatic firmware updates is great. Like, that's kind of... Nobody likes to do firmware updates. Uh, now you'll be able to go in and schedule all through the iDRAC um, once a month, look for firmware updates, and then automatically install those firmware updates. All right, something to look at is making sure they can disable that, because I know firmware updates, you're going to break your server sometimes. Yeah, and that's the thing, it is uh, fully configurable. You don't okay. have to use it, it's nothing that will happen without you op opting in, so to speak. Nice. All right, well, Corey, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, thank you to our sponsors, Xbyte Technologies. Remember, Xbyte Technologies, change your server to. It's a free trip to the beach with every purchase. At least it feels like it. All right, thank you for watching Xbyte On Demand. This is Ryan Brown and Corey Fodder. Have a good day.